The bin to oct function allows us to convert a binary number to an octal function. The function takes in two arguments, the first one being the binary number, and the second one is an optional argument called places, where we can define how many characters we want to be returned. So if not sufficient characters were returned, preceding zeros will be added. So let's demonstrate this. As you can see, I have some decimal numbers, which we are all familiar with. Then I converted these to binary. And now using the bin to oct function, we will be able to convert these binary numbers into the octal counterparts. So let's write equal sign bin to oct. And then I supply the binary number, press enter, and I pull this through. And as you can see, there we have the octal counterpart of the binary and the decimal number. Now, like I mentioned, there's also a second optional argument being the places. So let's put this places argument at five and press enter. And what you can now see is that preceding zeros are being added if the octal number does not take up the five places that we asked for. So it adds zeros up until the point where we have reached five characters equal to the places argument. Now, one important side note is that the binary and octal number representations in Excel are actually considered as strings. So we cannot do simple mathematics with them. For example, let's say I want to multiply this binary number times two, I could do equal sign, select a binary number times two, and I press enter. And while we are getting a result, it is not actually correct we are getting the decimal result of this calculation where we are considering this binary number as decimal and then multiplying it times two. If this was a binary number, it could never contain the digit two as the binary number system only has ones and zeros. The same applies also to the octal number system. So be careful when doing those kinds of calculations when you're working in other number systems in Excel. Now, how do these binary and octal number systems actually work? Let's take a closer look. Let's say we have the number 146. Well, we could use the DEC to bin function to convert this to a binary number. So 146 is represented as such in binary. Now, if we take 146, you can see that we have three digits, one, four, and six. The first digit has a weight of one, and every uh, digit that you go to the left, we multiply this value times 10. So one times 10. And then I simply pull this through. So then we get 10 times 10 being 100. Then we get 10 times 100, 1000, etc., etc. Now to get the actual number, we multiply the digit times its weight. And we do this for every single digit and then add the final result together. That is how we end up with 146. Now, this is all very intuitive because we are so accustomed to the decimal number system that we sometimes don't even think about this actively. Um, and that makes it harder to sometimes interpret the binary and octal number systems or even other number systems. Now, as you can see here that we have the binary representation of 146. So let's write this out in digits. So we have one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Now, in the decimal number system, the first digit had a weight of one. This is also the case in the binary number system. So then we have one. But instead of multiplying the weight of each next digit times 10 in a binary number system, we do this times two. So we do equal sign times two and we pull this through. So you can see the final one actually has a weight of 128. Now let's multiply the digit times its weight. We do this for every single digit. And then we add the final result together. And, and if everything went according to plan, there we have our decimal number once again. So here we've proven that indeed this binary representation is actually 146. Now we can do the same thing for an octal number. So then we could use the function we saw earlier, bin to oct, where we actually supply a binary number and we will get an octal number out of that. So you can see the octal representation of 146 is 222. Now in the decimal number system, we have 10 possible digits going from zero to nine. In the binary number system, we have two possible digits from zero to one. If you've paid close attention, you can see uh, the multiplication of the weight is also each time equal to the number of available digits in the number system. So for the decimal number system, we have 10 possible digits. So the weight goes up with 10 each time. 
In the binary number system, we only have two possible digits, zero and one. So the weight is multiplied by two each time. Now here we have 222 as the octal representation of 146. Now, what are the weights for in the octal number system? Well, the first digit once again is one, but then we multiply each previous weight with eight because there are eight possible digits in the octal number system and they go from zero to seven. So we take the previous digit and multiply it with eight and we do this for every other digit. So you can see the third digit is 40, 64. And so the digit thereafter would be 64 times eight as weight. Now let's multiply each digit with its weight and do this for every digit, just like we did before. And then we add the results together. You can see the result is 146. So this gives you an idea of what's going on behind the scenes when we convert a binary number to an octal number. You can see they are exactly the same number, but it's just different representations of the same exact information. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like these. You can also leave a tip using the PayPal link in the description. Thanks for stopping by. Feel free to watch this recommended video.